brother. Guys, you know we love us a good fandom here at Super Carlin Brothers, and here recently we have absolutely fallen in love with a new one. It's called The Name of the Wind. Oh, here we go. Seriously, this is like the number one thing that Jay and I are talking to each other about right now. And both of us have already listened through both books like several times. And we just really want to talk about it with you guys too. So today we don't have a theory for you. We just want to try to compel you to go and read these books. And this is not sponsored in any way, just purely fueled by our own enthusiasm and want to talk more about it. In fact, we ourselves have bought 100 copies of the book, and if you stick around to the end of the video, you can find out how you could get your hands on one of those. In the meantime, today we are going to discuss why you should read The Name of the Wind. Hey, brother! Okay, so what is this book. Well, first off, it's two books. Chances are many of you just may already be completely aware of the series because it is not not popular, but it is is currently dormant. The Name of the Wind is the first installment of the King Killer Chronicles series written by Patrick Rothfuss. It is a fantasy adventure story in the first book, The Name of the Wind, came out back in 2007, followed by Wise Man's Fear in 2011. There are also two short novellas called The Lightning Tree and The Slow Guard of silent things. Those two focus on some of the side characters, but so far, that's it. That's the whole library. And basically, since 2011, fans have been anxiously awaiting the third and final installment of the series, Doors of Stone. And this is really what makes this series so exciting right now, because fast forward 10 years later, and it feels like the end has to be near. I mean, right? It has to be. It has to be. At least I hope so. It's been a decade and the final publication date has come and gone a few different times. I mean, that's probably what fans thought after like six and then seven and then eight and nine years, but you know, <laughs> waiting is half the fun, right? You gots to have faith, people. That said, Pat, can I call you Pat? Mr. Rothfuss. You know, if you happen to be watching right now, take your time, it's okay. I'm having a blast speculating. Which is another reason to read, especially if you like the type of stuff that we cover on this channel, because this series is ripe for speculation. There are just so many little mysteries to be solved and the little ones that we've been able to piece together so far are so perfect that it's so satisfying to get it. That being said, I guess we should probably tell you guys just like a little bit about what this series is about without any spoilers, that is. The Name of the Wind tells the story of Quoth. That's K-V-O-T-H-E. I've re-listened to the entire series four times now, and I'm still not 100% sure I'm saying it correctly. I think it's like the word quote, but with like a TH at the end and a KV at the beginning. Quoth. Quoth is a musician, an arcanist, an adventurer, and a student at a school of magic. And if you get into the series, very likely the name of one of your future pets. He is extremely smart, quick-witted, sharp-tongued, impatient, and curious often to his own dismay. He spends most of his time at a school of magic trying to work towards his goal of hunting down a dark force, the name of which most people are too afraid to say. He has two best friends as the target of an extremely entitled school bully and kind of has a kooky mentor. Does this sound, I don't know, a little bit familiar? Well, don't be fooled. Yes, there are very familiar story elements inside the name of the wind to the Harry Potter series, but Quoth is absolutely nothing like Harry. And I mean that like, in a good way. But I will say that if you like the Harry Potter series, then chances are you will like this because it's kind of like adult Harry Potter, but not actually adult Harry Potter. Quoth is like 15 for most of the series. Actually though, on that note, because I know that we are a family friendly channel here at Super Carlin Brothers, if you are a parent watching right now, it is worth noting that especially in the second book, there are some amorous situations to be aware of. They are not like horribly explicit or anything, but they are very much there. I'll also warn you that basically right out of the gate, it drops you right into the middle of the world. I will say that you don't have a whole lot of time to like kind of get your bearings as you're dropping in, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of base knowledge just to get you started, but like no spoilers. First of all, like we said, Quoth is the main character of the story, but the first few chapters might not lead you to believe so. It takes a minute to get rolling, and during that time he is referred to by several different names in rapid succession. After all, 
names are important things. But for clarity, Quoth is Coat, is Reshi, is the innkeeper, he has red hair, he is the main character. Although that's kind of the other curious thing because he is also the one telling the story. Not immediately, but soon, you'll see. The premise is that in the present, he is dictating his own story to a notable biographer. And you should be aware that Quoth himself is a very good storyteller. On top of that, he himself is very interested in the nature of stories and is very particular about how he manages his own reputation. And as such, one of the fun parts of reading the story is being aware of this and wondering how reliable of a narrator Quoth actually is. Think of it as if Harry Potter is the one who's actually narrating the Harry Potter story. And the way that he talks about Quidditch makes it sound like he's really good at Quidditch, but maybe in reality, he was only kind of okay-ish at Quidditch? Would it have been as much fun if he was only okay-ish at Quidditch? No, but it makes for a better story and that's exactly what it's like with Quoth. Or honestly, is it? Guys, this is part of the fun. Like at points in the story, he will openly admit to how in his past, he was actively spreading false rumors about himself to further bolster his own reputation. Which kind of leaves you wondering like, is he doing the same thing in the present? Like are all these things actually lies or are they actually all truths and you don't want people to know that they're truths? At other points in the story, he will actually make a fictitious claim and then stop the story, come back to the present and ask the biographer why he didn't question him on something that was clearly a lie. This idea is then further explored throughout the story as Quoth encounters different people telling stories about the same event, but differently, leaving both Quoth and you, the reader, wondering like what actually happened? And the author Patrick Rothfuss' own fascination with stories further applies to how this entire story itself is written. Using his words, his story doesn't do what a story is supposed to do. A sentiment that I'm sure is worthy of some much deeper philosophical conversation, but what it really means at its core is that the story doesn't follow the traditional three act structure, or for that matter, any real structure that you might be accustomed to reading. What I'm trying to say is the villain doesn't like conveniently attack at the end of every school year. And I feel like maybe I'm making it sound like it's really complicated or hard to follow. Let me reassure you, that is not the case. The story just meanders from one adventure to another with little exciting things happening kind of everywhere, like in life. That said, I think you can 100% expect to see this story come off of the pages and onto the screen at some point in the future. It was actually even in development at one point in time, but is currently on pause. But do you know who the executive producer and who I imagine would probably write all of the music for the show is? It's Lin-Manuel Miranda. You may know him from some of his other notable works, like Moana, His Dark Materials, Mary Poppins, Hamilton. And when it comes, it's gonna be good. And okay, before I go into the final details about the giveaways for the book for today's video, there's just one last thing I wanna touch on. And that is the magic system. Like it always felt a little bit unsatisfying to me in the Harry Potter books as to how magic actually worked. Like what's the theory behind it? For the most part, it kind of felt like there was no real limits to it. And if you had a wand and you made a movement and you said the incantation, magic would happen. Which don't get me wrong, it is totally fine. I love Harry Potter and they do dip their toe into this a little bit with like the Patronuses and the unforgivable curses. Like for the Patronuses, you have to think of your happiest memory. And for the unforgivable curses, you really gotta mean it. But even that doesn't feel super deep. Name of the Wind is a different story. The sophistication and explanation of the magic is just fascinating to me. Like how it's manifested, the toll it takes, its limitations are all perfectly explained. It's all thought out and easily digestible, almost as if you're just basically explaining physics to somebody, but that's all I'll say for now. Guys, we're really just loving this series and we think that you will as well. So to celebrate that next month, we are going to be making a series of Name of the Wind theory videos. And we wanted to give you enough heads up so you could read the book and join in on the fun. Also, those are going to be bonus videos videos for the month that we're doing that. So we'll still have all of our regularly scheduled content. But if you want to start reading, we can help. We bought 100 copies of the book and we are giving them away. Here's how you can get one. It is super easy. If you want your own copy of The Name of the Wind, we have them now in our merch store. There is a link in the description down below and you should be able to 
see it on our merch shelf just below the video. But what's super fun about it is the first 100 people there will get the audiobook for free. Plus included with the audiobook are two digital bookmarks and two exclusive podcasts recorded by Jay and I doing a kind of book club discussion about each of the two books. So when you're done reading, if you want like a good old fashioned Super Carlin Brothers review, you'll have one. We will also be doing 100 free hard copies of the book, just pay for the shipping, link for those in the description as well. And included in the purchase of the physical books will be the Digital Perks bundle. Or, or if you are way ahead of the curve and already own your own books, you can actually just also purchase the digital bundle itself without any additional book. These will only be available for the next two weeks through April 8th. So be sure to pick yours up so you don't miss out on all of the content to come. I also want to just be super clear about this because this is not like just one big gigantic ad for us to sell books or something. We just genuinely want more people to read the story. And with that, we have priced these books as low as they will let us price them. But if you can find them cheaper, anywhere, then please, by all means, that is so okay. I think that the lowest price one that I have seen online is the mass market paperback edition, which is available on Amazon for $8. I'll even link that in the description down below. Also, you could probably check your local library. I bet that would work too. Although that being said, your local library is probably not offering our digital perks. Although if they have them, you're more than welcome to them. Anyway, guys, I hope that somehow, some way, I have convinced you to give the story a try so you can hop on board and be a part of the content that we're gonna be having coming in the next month. But guys, that is all I have for you today. Happy reading. I will see you next time. Bye.